What's up amigos, Commander Jaime here today. We're gonna do a Ferragus Premium Plays, and so as you've seen with the recent car reveal, this is an amazing stride. And so really what I wanna do with this video is show it in action. I know you guys are really excited to even play this, play test. And so I'm gonna focus on four different decks that do different uh, four premium plays. And so Fabulous will do the, the 12 plus attacks where Tetra has some options on first stride. And then we have Riptide to be able to abuse that Riptide more. And then of course, even if you had a Stokeo deck from Overdress, you can change that into a premium deck. And I'm gonna show that off too as well. So let's get right into it. Next level gaming has the new playmats already out for we have Bruce versus Bastion over here. Really amazing artwork, so I highly recommend. We also have the Vanguard Valentine's one. So if you're into like Angel Feather, for example, this would be perfect as well. And in the future coming out, we'll have something with Zorga versus Seraph Snow. So I'm excited for that one too. I'm gonna actually get that one myself too. So you can check out the affiliated link down in the description below and also get a 10% discount on your next purchase. Starting with Thavas, and so let's assume a high roll possibility. As in the words of Different Five, we, this is one possibility. And of course, there's different deviations that you can do. Uh, but let's say you went first and you went to your grade three turn, you did your Lambaro pseudo strike from the main deck, and then of course at the end of the turn you had Excel circles that you generated, and coming back to it, or before you come back to it, you G guarded a couple times, and so let's say you did it uh, twice using Ionis and another card to flip something, and for that example, you now have three face up cards in the G zone with that respect. And then once you stride and you know set up your board, this is what your board should look like in the sense too. And really what we'll be able to do is able to re restand four rear guards because this is gonna flip another card in the G zone. So you have a total of four cards. Another key note is that this really only needs one kind of blast as you can see, because our Vanguard is the only one that needs it. And obviously the scale is a lot easier if this is in the mid to late game as well. But in this high row possibility, like I said, let's say we're gonna do really, really well during this comeback. So for the first battle, we're gonna do Dennis with 14K. Then we're gonna use Pursuit Assault on the Excel Circle. So there's two Excel Circles, so we'll get an additional 10K, so 19, and then being itself on the Excel Circle is another five, so this is 24K. All the attacks moving forward will hit a trigger, th uh, trigger threshold, which is I'm really excited for that. And so for the third battle over here, we have this Pursuit Assault that's 19K plus an 8K, this is 27K. And then of course we'll Assault with Trigger to swap two units for us at the end of the battle. Um, so we're gonna swap this Coral Assault with this Dennis over here. And as you can notice, there's already three, or actually four, rested units already in the sense. And so this Coral Assault can then attack next, get the plus 15K, so it becomes a 24K beater. And then of course you can follow through with this other Coral Assault that makes it 29 because it is on the Excel Circle in that sense. Now this is where the fun begins. And so we're gonna have our stride over here where we can attack. And in this possibility, like I said, we're gonna high roll really, really, really well, uh, even with our triggers. And so we're gonna have crit, all effects on the title Assault, and then another crit. And then of course with Spicy with the over trigger, the 100 million, 100 million plus over here <laughs> in that sense too. And then at the end of the battle, you can use the skill, kind of last one. Flip another card in the G zone. Like I said, you'll have four. So restand four rear guards. We're gonna restand two coral assaults and our two pursuit assaults as well. And then we're gonna generate the also the other XL. In the process, you draw a card, and then we're gonna move this title assault to the open rear guard circle. And let me see if I can move this a little lower so you guys can see that a little bit better. Um, so with Aqua Force, there's like too many. Uh, Excel circles that build up over time. <laughs> uh, so this is what it looks like, and uh, it'll get an additional 10K as well. And so um, one of the things, if you do get triggers, more than likely your title salt will be the last two attacks, and so we'll focus on the remaining attacks that are weaker. Uh, this Pursuit Assault will be the next attack. And what's really cool is because we generated another Excel circle, this gets an additional 5K, so this makes it 24K on its own, which is really cool. And then following up, these, um, this Coral Assault will be next because now you have four other rested units. It includes the Vanguard, so another 24k attack. And then either Pursuit Assault or Coral Assault works on the Excel Circle because they're both 29, 15, plus 5, so plus 20k, so 29. And then here, Coral Assault will be also 29. And then lastly, with Tidal Assault, this would be at a minimum, you got uh, 10k power up and the 5k from the Excel Circle is 24k. 24k plus plus plus, put it on the triggers, it'll restand minus 5. In this case, we did the 100 million plus criticals and stuff. So this is technically 100 million plus plus minus the 5k from itself, <laughs> in that sense. And so we have 12 attacks. And then of course, these Coral Assaults will go into the Soul. 
and draw you two more cards and unstride and that's what it looks like now now obviously this won't be every first stride that you come back on you know if you went first as a grade three turn but this just is an example play that i really wanted to show the power that the new stride has within thalas and so we're gonna go uh with all this excitement we're gonna go down a level and then go into blue wave now so onto blue wave and and sometimes when we go first stride in premium and blue wave it could be a little bit clunky as us blue wave players we like to have a little more options on first stride if possible because once you get further than that the blue wave restanding strides really take care of themselves in that sense and so this is a different alternative to play outside of like jumbo for example um it's also kind of very um low card commitment you can actually not have a uh, a riptide in this example but i'm adding a riptide so uh typically we also have a corvette in the early game so this is already on the field by our time that we stride and so we can call fuevos and we can call riptide and really if you let's say you want to have a battle sequence that's kind of pressurable but also not to commit a lot and if your your hand isn't really suited for jembo because of the awkwardness sometimes that fuevos that even a card like riptide has unless you have really the other regards to work with in that sense too. So for the first attack, you're going to have Fuevo's attack. This is 9 plus 5, so this is a 14k attack. And then immediately, you'll attack with your Vanguard, and then, of course, have the pressure with Corvette boosting. Any triggers, let's say we got Triple Crit or something like that, all on the Fuevo, so you can take advantage of the Restand too. Uh, and then Skill to kind of last one. And assuming that you only have one face-up card in the G-Zone, you'll be only able to Restand one unit. And then you'll generate an Excel circle, of course. Let's say we put it over here. And then we'll move the Fuevos to the other Excel circle. So we can still benefit off the plus 5k. So that way we can abuse the restanding skill still. Because this will be the third wave now. And remember, I got an additional 10k. And so we have 14k plus the two that I got from itself. It's 16k. Then plus 10k from the stride makes it 26k outside of triggers and so any triggers will make this really strong of course you pay the counter blast to do the skill of course and then at the end of the battle it'll restand and now for the fourth battle you can attack again with it as well for the same number and then lastly we'll have riptide here as a another hitter that can hit for 32k if these are attacks are where this is weaker you may want to attack with riptide and save the foibles for last but if you do have like crits that apply that pressure and then it puts them to six damage then you can follow up still with foibles and this can be the last attack if you really want to give them that extra damage if they were able to guard this as well another option too is that if you have corvette this has on hit pressure too when it attacks and so if this attacks this is 13 because you have a blue wave but plus the five this makes it an 18k attack and then you have the booster here which is also on hit pressure and then when you restand this this will go over here get even bigger uh so 13 plus um no 18 plus 10 this will make it a uh, 28 and then again on hit it'll give you more on hit pressure to get more advantage for blue wave too so your opponent has to think like do i want these attacks to hit like do i want the counter blast so he can get an extra card depending on the matchup they're like okay i'm okay with that and then some matchups like ooh, i don't know if i want to do that um so it's just another play that you have option and then of course you can call more regards but at that point i feel like a jumbo play might be better too it just depends on the cards that you have set up wise you may be saying like okay that's cool with blue wave but i really got excited with that was like can another deck do like a, a good number of attacks with a lot of unhit pressure too or just a power play in sense and so we do have access to the riptide uh focus build so that is a deck that both my good amigos uh, Zay and Wave Nation concocted a couple years ago too. And this channel has a couple deck profiles over the years on how that got updated too. And so this stride actually helps a lot with that deck. So this is gonna restand Riptide as many, po uh, as many times as possible because it is a big beater. And we're gonna take advantage of that. And so typically first stride we would do Lambros, but now we have access to this card that also is able to flip a card, restand our unit. And so we're gonna be able to restand Riptide in a sense too. And so key cards, you wanna have a restander, a unit that can be the third battle and then of course our riptide here and then to add to the flavor is andre over here this is where you can kind of bless one and put it into soul give the red text to a card like riptide and then it gets the ability to that at the end of the battle that it attack a vanguard you can restand this unit and it gives plus 2k until the end of the turn so this makes anything a restander so with this setup the first way if you want to do is with the v title assault and of course use the soul blast skill um to be able to restand it for the first battle so this is 14k and then attack for the second another 14k and then we have third it could be anything as long as it hits the vanguard that's the pressure really because we have the additional so excel circle this will be plus five so this is 14k as well so this is three battles already and so we have riptide to be the fourth battle this is 32 
8K currently, and it has that pressure. And then finally, you have our stride that it can attack. And then of course we'll have like, I don't know, triple crit <laughs> uh, to go along with the Riptide, all the power and all the triggers to go to Riptide. And then of course at the end of the battle, since we only have one face up card in the G zone, we'll restand one, generate an Excel circle and we'll move Riptide to the new Excel circle so he gets to benefit the power up as well. And because of that, we're able to attack again. This will be the sixth battle. Uh, so 32K plus 15K from the Excel circle and the power up that'll make it 47k at least. And so any triggers will make it 57k, 67k, 77k, and so on. Um, and then at the end of that battle, it'll restand to get an additional 2k, which hits through another 5k threshold against like a force uh, vanguard, like a 13k beater or base. So that'll make it 49k at least. And so that'll be seven attacks. And so I really enjoy the Riptide deck because it's more of a fun build, but can sneak on opponents if they're not ready for this guy to attack multiple times in a sense, especially when it's your first stride or your first grade three turn. Okay, so now you may be saying like, that was pretty cool. Uh, what can Flagberg do now? And so with our overdressed deck, uh, we have key units such as Inland Pulse, Ascendance Assault that helps us with achieving that battle. So that way our Vanguard's like really the last one to attack. But with the stride, we are able to have more attacks after that and it enables you to restand multiple units. And so I'm gonna show off first our first stride and then following up with that too as well. Uh, so we're gonna stride into our new stride and then we're gonna use a card like Andre, uh, just like we did with Riptide, kind of less and put itself into Saul and give Inlet the ability to restand. And so that is a once per turn that you can dictate to, so you don't have to do it the first time that it attacks Vanguard in that sense. Uh, just to clarify too. And so with the battle sequence, just like with Flagberg, we're gonna have our dude over here that attacks. And assuming we use cards like Admantis to give plus 5k to these units, so they're a little bit more threatening on their own, this is 18k. And at the end of the battle, of course, you're gonna able to Soul Blast um, and then restand it to have another battle. And so you're gonna attack with your next card, which is the Ascendance Assault. Remember, you got plus five from the Admantis, so this is 15k. And then we're gonna attack Boosted as well, so this makes it uh, 26k. And then with Ascendance Assault seeing that attack, and you do have a Flagberg Vanguard, it'll restand itself. Uh, so this is the third battle. And then we're gonna have over here the fourth battle. 15k plus eight makes 23k, which is a good number for trigger thresholds in that sense. And then lastly, we're gonna have our Vanguard attack here for this moment. And we're gonna use example of just flipping one card in the G zone so you'll be able to restand once. And so you do your triple drive, um, you know, triple crit, uh, put it on inlet, of course. And then at the end of the battle, you're gonna kind of blast one to flip a card in the G zone, get an Excel marker. And then we're gonna move and restand the inlet as well at the same time. And now that inlet is plus 15K. Remember that it was 18K thanks to Admantis. So this now makes it a 33K unit that can attack still after that. And then of course it'll restand because of Andre's given skill and give it another additional 2K, which makes it um, 35 in that sense too, which hits against the 13K threshold to, to hit another 5K threshold in that sense too. And then what's really cool is that at the end of the battle, you know, you do your thing with Inlet Pulse to draw another card, really go from there. And then once you maybe get some damage and we go back to our turn, this is where you, it's even more fun is that you can actually Persona Ride and you'll draw a card and the Persona Ride is for the turn. So you could still stride on top of that. And now all of your front row rear guard circles, including the Excel ones, will see the Persona Ride. And so it's a blanket of plus 10K. And so you can start setting up your field still. Something like this. You have Inlet Pulse attack first. Soul Blast one at the end. Restand, attack again. Then third battle, this can attack with boost as well. And then, or actually you could just attack with it because this will be 20K on its own and you save the booster for later. Um, this is one, two, three. So now four of attacks in that sense. Then you'll have your stride attack and put any triggers on any of them, who's ever gonna restand still. But in this case, none of them are gonna be able to restand. So you can distribute the triggers if you want. And then at the end of the battle, you kind of last one, generate another Excel circle. And let's say, also for this example, let's just say we put something behind the Vanguard before we did this. And we can generate the second Excel circle and then move this guy, restand three or four of our units, just depending on your setup. And then as you can see, you restood your fill like this. So this is what it looks like so far. 
And these are all plus 10k because of the Persona right stuff. Gotta remember that too. And so probably the weakest one would be Inlet, I guess, or the this guy. I'm just doing this on the fly, <laughs> uh, in this sense. And then you attack and attack, and then this boosted attacks. We got our famous Riptide with the booster two and then, and so boom. And so you can see even a, a deck like Flagberg can just have incorporate this stride and have access to Excel Circles and the Personal Ride at the same time. And it makes for a fun deck. This is something that I don't have a, a deck list yet for, uh, but it is something to toy with in that sense too. So if you guys wanna see maybe something more of a premium format, let me know and I can actually spend some time on it and see what I can come up with as well. And that's the video for today. I just wanted to show up some spicy plays that I could show up with the different types of decks. Obviously, there's a lot more play testing that needs to be more looked into. And so if you guys are play testing ourselves already, let me know your feedback. What are you liking about the stride a lot? And also, what are some crazy plays that you may have uh, discovered that I have yet to discover too? You know, definitely let me know in the comments. And of course, if you like the video, like it down below. And again, I had the honored and um, I'm humbled by the opportunity for Bushy Road to be able to have me present the strike too as well. So if you just stumbled onto this video and you wanna see the initial card review for this card, click on the link or at the description below somewhere that you can check it out too. It's it's really a, a good stride for, I feel like a good addition to Aqua Force as a whole, as you can see. And so we have access to different plays in that sense too. And I appreciate just having to be able to play test now again with Aqua Force and have some fun. We got Pursuit Assault in the English too. So far this is more exciting with the new Adelaide coming out too. So that could even be proxy played or uh, eventually comes out for us in English to play as well. Also, if you've seen the Playman in my background, this is Next Level Gaming. And so if you want to level up your gaming, check out Next Level Gaming Playmats. And also use my code Commander Jaime for a 10% discount or use the affiliate link as well. And then they're having a three, uh, three special where if you get three Playmats like for your team for Team Link, you'll get a 25% off on your next purchase as well. And then of course, check out 50 Card Shop too. If you want to get the next uh, set of bundles from there, uh, use Jaime as a 5% discount too. And then of course, if you want to support through TCG Player, use the affiliate link at below as well. Anything helps to support the channel for more future content to bring you quality and also exciting types of plays that I want to show off to in the future. So with that, amigos, again, share the video with people that you feel like they may like this video, Aqua Force or Favas or the new Faragas uh, Dragon Stride. And then of course, subscribe if you haven't. And if you haven't hit that bell for notifications too as well, hit that bell for more future content.